All right, so uh, I've been asked to donate this piece to a museum, and uh, this is an emergency uh, beacon radio from World War II. It transmits only, and you put a crank on the top, and you crank it, and uh, you set it to, let's see, auto two is the calibration, just, you know, sends A's. Auto one is SOS, so set it to auto one, which it's already set to. Deploy the antenna through a balloon. There's a ground. You drop the ground into the seawater. And um, now you can uh, send SOS at 500 kilohertz. The microphone modulated to MCW. And there's some light indicators up here to tell you what's going on. So you got to make sure as you crank it that this remains illuminated. And then this one's for antenna tuning. So, and of course there's a manual key if you want to send stuff so i guess you can hook up a lamp to it as well so anyway this thing is uh going to a museum today and uh i'm just going to pack it up and ship it out Crazy and loud, okay? Right? You don't have to cover your ears. Listen, uh, listen. Tell to me it aloud what this is again so I can put it on this video. Oh, for yeah, everyone. give me a video. So, so this, this is actually a piece of World War II radio <coughs> equipment that um, I'm donating to a museum, the USS Tours. These children are going to see it work for the last time before it gets shipped out. And this is an emergency beacon. So, if you're stuck, your ship sinks, or your plane crashes, this is how you'd call for help. And it works, and we're going to listen to it on the AM radio, actually. Um, All right, so it gets a little crazy. So what I do is I crank this. Can't you hear it? I'm not even cranking it fast enough yet. See that? All right, we're going to put it up here. See how it's, see how see how, see the shape of this thing is kind of funny. It's because you put it between your legs. All right, and you crank it. And what happens is, see that? Uh -huh. That's this. Oh. Okay. <laughs> now, now you want to hear a call for help? Yes. Okay. Are you ready? Help! Help! Stand by now. Now who knows what Morse code is? What's Morse code? Yeah. It's they send a bunch of beeps and dots. Instead of talking, they send beeps and dots, and that's what this is going to send. So you ready to hear? Hang on, it's start sending. Listen. Stand by! Hear that? Hear that? They're calling for help right now. <laughs> Hang on, it's starting to crank. Alright, who wants to crank it? All right, you drink it. Lydia, come here. Lydia. Come here. Do you want to do it? She doesn't even need help this one. She just knows what to do. Oh, let's just send it continuous. That's the hardest one. Okay, Lydia, let's show them how it works. All right, you ready for the next part of this? You have a seat, everybody. Now we're gonna we're gonna show you what's inside. You want to, who wants to see what's in this? Thing? All right, all right, let's do it. You always saw it, Lydia. All right, let's get this ready now. We didn't take a, a car out. <laughs> so this stuff was actually made to be um, serviceable. What's that mean? That means that. It was meant to be repaired and tested. Here, just sit around. We'll, we'll, pat, we'll show you once it's open, okay? How about you, Lydia? Here. Give them a little room. Okay, you all see. So, so when you loan this, is it a loan? No, it's always, given. You're there's, actually giving it to the museum. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's there forever. That's the easiest way to do it. Yeah. You know, more people will see it if they have it than if it's in my collection. So. Right. I would rather just give it to them. and. Cool. 
So is it going to be in the inner? Is the museum in the Inner Harbor in um, Baltimore? I believe so. It's a it's a museum ship, and you can you can tour it. And they're going to have a display for their um, as a summary. A big mission is to find the downed uh, air crews, right? As well as people who have been sunk and whatnot. And these were used often in, for for uh, life rafts and aircraft, actually. And later in uh, and in mostly in World War II, World War II. All, entirely in World War II. Yeah. Now after World War II, these were used in, up till the early seventies. Okay. Because they were, you know, it was a really actually good technology. For them. Right. Here, it's just going to be a minute. There's nothing interesting to see yet until I get all the bolts off. We'll see some interesting stuff in a minute once I get all the bolts off. These things. Now you see, there's this rubber gasket around here. It's waterproof, so this thing could be soaked in seawater and it won't. You know, die or anything, it'll be it'll be okay. That's it. I'm staying. Is that cool? Oh, so biting. Yeah, sharks would lose their teeth if they bit this thing. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you that much. Because yeah. it's been a long time. Because this is tough. This is really well built. It's tough. Brayden, why don't you sit up on your so, bottom, okay? So that there's so room for the. It's not going to be a problem. Oh, Anna. Oh, what if something Everyone will go back to like, their spot? What if we don't like need to. Smash Oh yeah. Well, things. I, are, this I think one, you're good where you are. It's Everybody tough. should it, be it's, able to see. Things can smash it. Okay. In fact, this one's I'm sure has been knocked around and smashed quite a few times. Yes, you can, works. Emily. If you put yourself right up in that circle right so, beside Brody, you'll be able to see. I promise. I'll tell you what. Everyone here did such a nice job making this thing work. Was that hard when you turned it? Was it tough to turn? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. <coughs> Let's take the inside out. Nice and gentle. Wow. Hang on. This is the uh, in there. So, as I said before, it's actually designed yeah. Lydia, to be serviceable. Okay, you see that? Not disgusting. This is, that's called a. Uh, it's a coating. It's called the conformal coating that you smell. They actually coat this with a waterproofing material so it doesn't get destroyed with salt water. <laughs> now you see this thing. This is called a radio transmitter. Have you ever seen a transmitter with a radio transmitter? Nobody has before. I, I'm sure of it. Okay. Isn't that cool? There's no dust in there at all. Yeah, actually, it's uh, quite well built. There's actually, uh, see this right here? Mm -hmm. This black thing? That's called a vacuum tube. There's two of them in here. See that? Mm -hmm. We don't use those anymore. We use a thing called a transistor. Now you look in here. You see, what's in there? You see this big thing? That's called a generator. No. I know what a generator is. I know what a generator is. What is it, Ronan? Um, it's a powerful thing that does electricity to um, the world. That's right, that's right. There's generators power electricity to our homes. So, I know that because I saw it. In what's the this? Box. What is, what's all this right here? See this? I don't know. That goes to the hand crank. And then the hand crank goes to this generator. And all this stuff, what this does is it makes the Morse code for you, okay? okay. It automatically sends the Morse code so you don't have to send that it is yourself. So cool. And it was automatic because if you're stuck out in the ocean, you're probably under a lot of stress. And the last thing you want to do is learn Morse code. So that's what's inside this thing. Excuse me. Yeah. No, it's that it's why, back where we why came. Couldn't, uh, why could it not a uh, call person? You can't call a person because this is, this is a long time ago before they were able to call people. Okay? The technology was different back then. It's not like it is today. And also, secondly, this goes much further than your phone does. When you turn this thing on, its stated range is around 500 nautical miles when the wire's out. That's a lot further than your phone can go. Oh. So it's, it's a special thing meant to go really, really far and find somebody to come rescue you. Like, like can they go all the way to heaven? Um, no, that's more awful than it can go. It can go, it, it can cross continent. It can easily appear in the middle like of Atlantic across continent. Thing. Yeah, other questions? Yeah. Can I go to Ant? Yes. Whoa. These were in Antarctica. Lots of them, actually. And the North Pole. Oh, yeah. I'm sure these things have been in the North Pole. No doubt about it. Can they go all the way past it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They can go all the way past it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They can cover no, it's not so exactly. They go really far. That's what radios do. And this old stuff, this is all they had to, to ask to look for help, to seek help, was this and nothing else. That's what is they that did. That's what it this is waterproof. This is the gasket, and then um, this is the radio transmitter. All this is the whole thing waterproof. It is, yeah. Once this is closed, it's really super waterproof. You can dump it in the water, and it'll be fine.
track wherever it is at any time. Thank you very much. Okay. Off it goes. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Anytime.